heading 185, reduce speed 182 and off. 185 on the heading 180 on speed off there, 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 and off to 40 and me. 160 to 40, speed Hey guys, Matt here. Hope you're all well and welcome back to another P3D video. Uh, sorry about the delay between the last one and this one. I did mention in the uh, the video I made where I, I kind of made the comeback video that um, my schedule uh, or videos even are very heavily dependent on my schedule. And so the last week for me has just been completely rammed. I mean, the last time I even double checked YouTube was or it felt like yesterday, but in reality, it was a week ago. Uh, so that's just part of the process. I got a lot going on. Um, I've not quit. I'm back. <laughs> and like, there's no issue there. Uh, but you'll just have to uh, bear with me a little bit when uh, things get a little bit hectic. Uh, speaking of hectic, one of the main reasons at the moment for me uh, being busy is that we are, me and the team, are preparing for the uh, Flight Sim Show, which is happening on the 5th of October, uh, which is only, what, 7, 16 days away, something like that, um, in uh, in the RAF Cosford Museum. Well, it's not actually the museum. It's like the hangar next to the museum. Um, so if you would like to come and say hi and visit uh, the show, it, it's an awesome show, great, great social aspect, a uh, bunch of great exhibitors. Um, and uh, I'll be speaking, which will be very the very first time for me public speaking um, uh, on the Saturday, uh, the 5th at, I think my slot is 12.45, but I'll leave the link to the uh, the Flight Sim show uh, under the video, and uh, if you want to buy tickets, uh, I think they're like £10 pre-order, um, and uh, you get like a goodie bag with some stuff in. Um, I'll be there, the team will be there, you're more than welcome to come say hi, we'll do a bit of a meet and greet. Um, I've been there every year now for the last, what, this will be my fifth year, and uh, every every year it just gets bigger and better. And uh, so if you can make it, then cool, see you there. If not, then I'm sure there'll be plenty of footage posted from the event, including all of the talks that are done. Uh, I know that I'm speaking, Orbex is speaking, uh, Kevin from FSFX Packages is speaking, I think Laminar might be speaking as well. Uh, there's a bunch of us doing some talks, so it should be a very good weekend. I am uh, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, I digress. Again, sorry for the delay, but we are back, and a lot of you in the last couple of videos have requested that we continue with the Boeing theme because you were sick of seeing Airbus, uh, and Captain Sim uh, released their version 4 upgraded 757. Um, which is what you see in front of you. They actually released it with the uh, the Pratt & Whitney engines. I talk about a, a very strange business model. Uh, the Pratt & Whitney engines on the 757 are not the most popular variant. It's always been the Rolls-Royce, which is, is what you see in front of us. And so uh, very cleverly, Captain Sim have made it so that you have to buy the Pratt & Whitney before you buy the Rolls-Royce, uh, which, you know, marketing business 101. Uh, forcing the users into something that they probably don't really want, but hey-ho, that's the way it goes. Uh, so we're on the ground here at Keflavik, and uh, th there's a few reasons for this flight. I'll go into those in a little minute. Uh, but this is GSX version 2. If you just noticed then, there was some um, people walking down the stairs. Uh, that was the crew. We've now got passengers, uh, but GSX version 2 or level 2 is just a whole another meme in itself. Um, it's, I mean, if you've got it, you'll understand the problems. Um, it is a very, very, very badly designed uh, piece of software. I used to be a huge GSX fan, but since they have supposedly leveled it up, uh, not so much now. But let's let's hope that they work with people as opposed to tell everybody that they're wrong um, and uh, and actually iron out the problems. Uh, so yeah, anyway, Keflavik, Aerosoft Keflavik X is actually originally made for Flight Sim X. Uh, I ported it across to P3D version 4. It works. Uh, yeah, it works. It's um, it's not got anything like dynamic lighting or sewed or anything like that, but I mean, whatever. It, I put myself on a remote stand for a reason, because I don't want to try and have to use the jetways. 
Uh, Ultimate Traffic is powering the AI. And speaking of Ultimate Traffic, um, I actually need to run AI Smooth because someone in the video uh, comments from last week's video told me that it still works in P3D. So I'm going to just boot it up now and uh, we'll see if it does. I don't know how you meant to make this work, but uh, ah, it, it doesn't. Flight Simulator is not running, so there's clearly some issue there. Uh, maybe I need a different version of SimConnect or something like that. But whatever, it's it's Iceland, it's Keflavik. There's like two movements every hour, so we're not going to get any, any problems. Uh, anyway, we're off to Glasgow because uh, right now Glasgow is getting absolutely destroyed by weather. Um, it was pointed out to me by uh, someone in my Discord mod chat. Speaking of Discord, someone asked in the comments uh, if I had a Discord. I do have a Discord. I'll leave the uh, link to it below uh, the video. But if you are after um, a thriving community, which is debatable, but I quite enjoy the community that is in my Discord. Uh, discord.gg, so HTTPS discord.gg forward slash Matt Davis will get you there. Again, link underneath the description. Um, we have uh, literally, I think there's like 10,000 people in there. It, it's insane. Um, and uh, from that, there is a bunch of channels. I'm just looking at it right now. Uh, there's things for screenshots, there's support channels, there's even people posting pictures of food and memes and IRL stuff. And uh, it's just a good place to hang out and, uh, and kind of be a little bit closer to this whole thing as opposed to just watching videos so if you're a discord user and you uh and you fancy that then that is uh there for you uh, if you so wish to use it so the flight number uh, i actually don't know but we'll use project fly and we'll find out so we will have a look for bikf to uh glasgow egpf and uh, it's isa 430 uh, it's supposed to go out this morning, but whatevs. Two hours and ten minutes. Uh, let's buck all this up. That's fine, that's fine. Scheduled IFR. And let's just find my ISA. Um, ISD is our reg today. I'm not going on that sim. I'm going to go offline, so we'll book and dispatch that. And one thing I did forget to do was boot up PFPX, which I'll do on the right-hand side of the screen now. But while PFPX is booting up... Let's nip into the flight deck and uh, get some power. So Shift 2 will bring up the little menu, uh, which you actually can't see because it is behind my face. I wonder if I can move it. No, I can't. Uh, maybe if I click like there. No, but trust me, it's like you can see this here. It's a big like square thing, but you click the plane and then we can... Uh... Actually, no, that's not how you get external power. External power is EP. There we go. You can't see that, but trust me, I put EP on. Uh, external power up the top here works. So battery on, close the guard, external power, standby power, uh, utility buses, generators, etc. And that can stay as it is. We need the position light on. Uh, it's daytime. Some carriers like to use the logo light, some don't. It really does not matter. You do you. Uh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? I don't think we can really do very much about that. The panel lighting and the Captain Sim 757 is not the best. So even if you do try and turn up the lighting, it still looks a bit crap. Uh, but never mind. So that's all that. Um, don't need to do anything else at the moment. Just leave everything to start itself up. I'll put the emergency lights to arm. But eventually, um, things will start to come on. In fact, there you go. I'll just turn the brightness up on the left fmc okay so we can pop over to uh pfpx hopefully yes there we go and aircraft database do we have a 757 in the list i can't remember if i've ever pfpx a 757 i have beautiful but it was american however that does not matter because we can duplicate it and we can change the reg to I actually don't know what the reg is again. TFISD. So we'll put TFISD. Copy, paste. RB211. Kilos, meters, meters. Uh, actually, no, altitudes are in feet. Lengths are in meters. Uh, the rest is fine because we've duplicated it. And we can save that. And then we can go to the flight page and using uh, Project Fly to grab the flight number. So it's. FI430, 
from BIKF to EGPF. Uh, and this is saying 2 hours 10 minutes as well, interestingly. Zero fuel weight, six, uh, 79.9, max is 83, that's fine. Find destination alternates, and it will probably find as Presswick, Edinburgh, that's fine. Find route, relatively straightforward. Um, I reckon that arrival is wrong, but we can always check the charts as we get further towards Glasgow, uh, as long as we end up at a finer than... I highly doubt there's going to be any problems. So we can release that. I'll print all that out and get that sent to uh, to my network so we can actually do something with it. And then I can take this ATC flight plan and uh, I'll paste that into, uh, into Project Fly. Perfect. Right. Back into Project Fly. And paste the route. Paste that. Dispatch. Fly now, and we will appear on the radar. Oh yeah, I, I should say really. Um, I I don't know. I mean, people are, are saying it's because of uh, the exposure from the videos, but if you're one of the uh, literal thousands of people that have signed up to Project Fly over the last couple of weeks and are now using it actively, you're actually incredible. We um we hit uh, an all time high on the weekend of like 600 plus people all flying at once which is just insane, like absolutely insane. There we are, that's our flight. Uh, right now there's 258 or probably 259, but even so, you know, we're, uh, what day is it? Wednesday, it's a Wednesday afternoon. People are in school, people are at work, and there's still almost 300 people flying. Like that is really, really cool. Uh, variety is always on point. People using the schedules, real call signs. I say as I hover over someone called 227. That should be Emirates 227, I'd imagine. Um... But yeah, uh, good, good stuff. Thoroughly enjoying uh, bringing you updates to it. And I know that the rest of the team are highly motivated by the uh, increased uh, user activity. So, danke schön, as the, uh, I think it's the Germans say. Whatever. Wow. Holy crap. There is literally a storm outside. And it blew my window open a little bit. That's scary. Okay, so um, let us do the following. I need to export my, my flight plan, which apparently I can't do because uh, I'm trying to export it to the wrong directory. Nice one. And uh, I will load it into Active Sky. Perfect. So first things first, let us align the IRSs like so. And we will put the window heats on. Uh, everything is fine. We can just throw all this on. That's okay for now. Hydraulics don't need to be on. Fuel pumps also don't need to be on. Um, and we will go here and we will enter the IRS position like so. It's instant because I have it set that way, but you can have it set to realistic if you want. Uh, we're at Keflavik, so B I K F. And we're on stand 10. Not sure if it'll take that. It did. Fair enough. Uh, and then we are BIKF to EGPF and ISA 430. And uh, runway here is going to be. Let's have a look at the winds. So the winds today 03021, which will put us off of a runway I reckon zero one that is a very nice taxi but yeah zero one okay runway zero one activate that cool right we can go into the other FMS we use this for all of the MISC stuff options fuel and payload so zero fuel weight is uh, why is it in pounds what are you doing let me just go here options kilos there we go uh, here we go. Right, zero fuel weight, 58.4, but we actually want it to be 79.9. So we'll do 79.9 in there. And we are going to take uh, 10 tons of fuel. So... I'll just take 12 just to be on the safe side. I don't trust myself. Why has the zero fuel weight gone down? 
We changed the fuel on the zero fuel when it went down by two. What point is zero fuel? Uh, zero fuel weight, 79.8. I swear if this increases the fuel now, okay, we're good. So, that's done. Uh, we can go here and we can actually just throw in the route. So, the route is out of runway zero one via, uh, no departure apparently. I'm just going to quickly check the SIDS and see if anyone goes in the way that we need to go. The first waypoint is Metal. Um, doesn't look like anything goes that way. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Fine by me. So, root is... Kilo, Foxtrot, Victor. Direct. Actually, there's no direct. It's the Golf 3 airway to Metal. And then from that, Bravo 1 to uh, Victor Mike. These waypoints. Victor Mike. Uh, and then direct Aldan. Like so. <laughs> Uh, I reckon it's going to be 62 north, but let me check. Aldan is 62, yep. And then direct uh, 6 1 1 4 N. Excuse me while I scratch my lower nostril. Direct a Balix, which is into the Scottish FIR. And then the UP-59 to Ninex or Ninex, whatever you want to call it. Uh, direct to a place called Bruce. Typical Scottish name. And uh, then the Lima 602 to Bryce. Oh, no, not Bryce. I don't know where I got that from. Finer. Uh, Foxtrot Yankee November Echo Romeo. Perfect. Okay, so the zero fuel weight is, uh, as I said before, 50, so not 50, 79.9, which is fine. Reserves, FMS reserve is three tons. Uh, we are cruising at an altitude of 37,000 feet. Cost index, we'll just whack it up and uh, take, actually, we need to go back because I didn't fill that in. Uh... This is it, Cruise CG. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Oh, you just right-click to autofill. Okay, that's cool. Um, flaps 15. And the thrust, I mean, this thing is overpowered as hell. So we could take it all the way back if we wanted to, he says. I wonder if I have to put a C in. Nope. Let's try 55. There we go, 55 is fine. Uh, Takeoff gross weight is going to be 89.5. So we can throw that in. And uh, the surface wind, 030 at, what did I say it was? 030 at 21. The uh, slope is zero. And the outside air temperature is a grand old nine degrees. Perfect. Acceleration height, 1,000 feet. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's put it to 3,000. And there's the speed. So, 142 is what goes in the box. Come on. 142. Um, I don't know what the initial climb is because we're not actually on a SID. Uh, but the all of the other SIDs just say initial climb routing by ATC. And the transition altitude for here is 7,000. So, if we stick 7,000 in here... Uh, and then we'll just climb to the transition altitude initially, and then we'll just spend half an hour scrolling. Put that back to the takeoff page. The runway heading for us today is 014, which is a bank limit just until we get out of here. 014. And we can put the auto brake to RTO. Uh, we can put some... Uh, data on the map 
So let's see what we've got here. Route data, map mode, weather or terrain. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll leave that off on that side, but then on this side, I'll go terrain, turn the brightness down a little bit. Just reduce this DH to minus 20, put that to map, that like that, that like that, perfect. Same for this side, minus 20. And then we'll put the barrow to a 1000 above, which at the moment is sitting at uh, 1000, whatever it is, we'll just put it there. It's fine. Uh, we're not on that sim, so no need for Unicom. Set the transponder to 2000, and we can test it, I suppose. I'll come back and do a bunch of things. Left flight director, right flight director. TCAS test. Auto Pass. throttle. Uh, we can't use LNAVVNAV because we are not doing that at the moment. I suppose we could use VNAV, uh, which is fine. Okay, right. Fuel pumps can come on. We have fuel. We're not. Ha we don't have fuel in the center though. Uh, let's see what's going on outside. They are not doing very much. Uh, so what we will do is we will go uh, prepare for push. Actually, you know what? Do you want to see some some people get on? This is the whole meme of GSX Level 2. They've added passengers, and I've not actually shown you this. So uh, I'll do that. What have I done? I pressed something on my other screen, and now it's screwed it up. Oh, that's fine. While the uh, while the people are coming to deplane, or no, not deplane. We already did that to board the passengers. I'll uh, I'll just have a quick look at the charts, which are uh, here. So you can see I've got the aerodrome chart up at the moment, uh, and if I go to the parking stands, uh, you can see that we are on stand ten, which is this one right here, on taxiway uniform. So we need to get to runway one, which is all the way down here. So we need to taxi out uh, left onto, uh, I guess that's November. And then right on Echo and then just follow that all the way down. We're not on the SID. It doesn't really matter. So uh, that's basically everything as far as uh, getting out of here. You can hear the passengers or the bus coming towards the aircraft. You can see it here. They'll actually get off and walk. It's very, very weird. Apparently, people are saying that the uh, the models that they're using are from OMSI. <laughs> what is this guy doing? Why do they all walk like they're trying to bend backwards? Like, what is all that about? Look at them go. I mean, the last time I checked, you can't actually drag a wheeled carry-on up a set of stairs. But I will try that. In before they turn right and not left. Okay, they turned left. Fair enough. And then they go. They're all locked in now. Here comes the pallets. Pilots have apparently boarded, as you can see in the top left. Do we not have any cabin crew? Oh, here we go. Yeah, there they come. Bet you look weird from up here, seeing them just get on the plane. Oh, no, because the door's too far back. All right, well, while that's happening, we can uh, fire up the APU, which... Wait, is it already on? No, it's not. It's just in the on state. Uh, I don't know why the anti-ice is on there. That's weird. Your damper can come on now. The IRSs are uh, aligned, which is sorted. Uh, pressure over here is fine. Seatbelt signs on. No smoking on. We can clear the upper. I don't know why I'm pressing that. It's the complete wrong button. There we go. Apparently the spoilers are out. Really? No, they're not. 
What's the trim? The trim is 3.4. We've got way too much trim. But we can't trim because we don't have any way of powering the trim motor. So, never mind. We'll just wait. Baggage loading progress is 20%. But yet, they've still not bothered anybody. So, and there's the door. Or there's the stair. I don't know, everything's just modelled very weirdly. How strange. I reckon that APU's on now. Yep, it is. So we can turn off the external power. And through uh, this, we can also turn off the external power through the menu. And we will uh, actually... I always get scared with GSX because I want to tell it to push back, but I know until it's done everything, if I try and make it do it, it will just break. So we'll just let it board things and then... Uh, like, where's the passengers? What is this? Is there a bus with people on? Where is it coming from? I can't see a bus anywhere. Now, do you understand the memes? This is basically the Mary Poppins handbag of vehicles. Like, what the hell? Like, it, it, there's a slight bit of immersion. Like, when you see people walking up to the plane, it's like, oh, yeah, this is cool. But, you know, they walk through each other. They clip through the staircases. They also... What's that now? What's... What the hell? This, like, this is what I'm talking... I mean, I, I always get shouted at for moaning, but I'm sorry. Like, you're paying for, for GSX uh, Original Plus um, Level 2. It's, it's like $80, $70, $80. And this is what you're getting? Like, th there's just no quality assurance at all. It's, it's completely knackered. And it's apparently only boarded 25 passengers, but is this, is the, the count's going up, but there's no more people. And yet they've all come from this little bus thing. I don't know. If you have G GSX level 2, I'm genuinely con um, not concerned. <laughs> well, I'm concerned, but I'm genuinely curious about what you think. Is it me just mean me just being a whiny uh, so-and-so? Or is uh, is this just not acceptable? I, I, I don't know. I, GSX used to be alright, and they've just screwed it. Like, I couldn't even get it to work with the FS Labs properly in that first video when it just stopped boarding midway through. And I've had other memes as well where I'm refueling and it gets to the desired fuel and then carries on fueling it until the aircraft is literally overflowing with fuel. Like, that's not okay. Oh, look, now they've decided to actually give us the right bus. That's a lot of people. Why have they got no faces? Oh well, at least they're going to be greeted by somebody. Actually, what you can do... I forgot that Captain Sim has this feature. If you go F Shift 2, uh, you can click on Stewardess. And the Stewardess will do something. I have no idea, but... What if I get rid of her? I have no idea. I guess they just left that menu item in there and didn't actually do anything with it.
It's just awkward. It's just really awkward. Oh well. Apparently there's still a hundred and... 70, 80 people left to go on the plane, so we'll see how long that takes. Finally, they've all boarded. God damn it, that took a while. Okay, so uh, let us carry on. Now the, uh, see, although they've boarded, it's still not saying that they have, but whatever. We will close the doors, cargo doors, uh, that's fine, I don't really care about that. Has it fa finally said that they're done? Boarding passengers now. There aren't any more to board, mate. Why have you got a bus coming towards us? You wanted 215. You boarded 215. We done! Get out of here! Look at them coming back! Yeah, okay. This is where I do this, and I do this, because this is the problem that we have. So, uh, pushback and departure, straight pushback apparently, and uh, we will close the doors. This is what I like, it, it's just, it, it is completely immersion breaking. Like, that's not what you want. Okay, so the parking brakes on. We don't need the chocks. We can get rid of those. We're ready for pushback. Um, everything else is fine. Uh, we can throw the beacon light on. Uh, we can now pressurize all of the hydraulics. There's a certain order that they're supposed to go in, but YOLO. And now we are ready to go backwards. Locking gear. There we go. Connected. Now the sounds on this are from TSS, but they're nice. But I, I feel that even though the sampling is good, the way that they've implemented into them into the actual plane is not that great because the starter sequence on it is a bit bad uh, and it fires up way too quick. Departure check completed. Bypass bin inserted. Release okay, so we'll release the parking brakes like so um we can start the clock on this side he says why won't it start that's the complete wrong way that's not really the correct way to do it but whatever okay so uh packs off PSI is over, well, it's actually 30, which is enough to start the engine, so we can go ground, start two. You can hear it come in. Now, there's a criteria for the start sequence of the RB211s. You've got to meet, like, so many things before you can put the, the fuel in, and I did get taught which way around it was, but I can't remember, so I'm just going to wait for a little bit. And then, once we uh, have, I reckon... Uh, that sounds like it's probably about ready, to be honest. And there's the engine. You hear it, like, cuts a little bit and it whines. It's alright, but... Uh, stop here and complete pushback. We done. Set parking brakes. Parking brakes set, and we will start engine one. Unlocking gear. Tow truck disconnected. 
bypass been removed. I send you more up. Just come to think of it, at now actually, I don't know if you actually have to turn the packs off. You probably don't. They're probably on auto for a reason. Anyway, APU, uh, we don't need any more. We can turn that off. Uh, we can pull that out. Um, everything else looks okay. Uh, landing altitude, Glasgow, it's right like 150. It's fine. Um, we can go flat 15. One, two, 15. See the flight controls. It's okay. Now I can deal with that trim issue. So they want 3.43 or 3.5. So we are way out of trim. One about there, I reckon. Uh, okay, we can go WX and T and weather on. Uh, this is a problem because you put the TCAS on like so, if it'll let me. TARA or TA, which is fine, that clears the warning. But then you have this auto throttle disconnect warning, which will not go away. I guess that needs to be fixed. Okay, uh, taxi light on, uh, which is here, right there. You can put the turn offs on if you want. And parking brake out. A bit of power goes a long way. And we're going to go left. left here onto November and then right onto Echo and then as we discussed all the way down to runway 01 or runway 1 if you're American because they don't tend to put zeros in front of anything. Although I reckon that I've done something wrong here because why is there no taxiway in front of me? Oh no, there is. There is. I'm being stupid. Yeah, here's Echo. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, so we're finally here. <laughs> Took a long time. There's traffic on final, but they're uh, quite far out, so no issue. Right, strobe lights, landing lights on, everything on. We will start the clock. Transponder to TARA. We can keep it rolling actually. One point five seven E per power set. Crosswind is slightly from the right. B1, rotate. 
the right gear up. See how much I derated that. Climb performance is terrible. That's okay. That's where we parked up. Actually, not there. Where is it? There we go. That's where we parked up. See a left hander at the gate and a whiz there. Alright, we'll go ahead and select. And we will go. Uh, let's see. Command on the left. Flight level change, which will then throw it into VNAV speed. Perfect. And we eventually want to make a right hand turn, which we will do now. So I'll put that back to auto. Spin it round. Oh, 150 is good enough, I reckon. It's going to accelerate at 3,000 feet, remember. direct to metal with El Nav. Or not. What's going on here? M-E-T-I-L. Direct. Okay. That's a really nice view. Black fire. Flat one. We'll just keep bringing the flats in. Success. We'll carry on all the way up to flag level 370. That's flag level 500. <laughs> the scrolling capability of this MCP is amazing. All the way up. You can switch the landing lights off and the turn offs, taxi lights off. Gear can go to the off position. Like so. We are in climb. No weather in the way, really. And we will go to standard pressure 1013. And 1013 on the standby. Estimating Glasgow at 3 p.m. UK time. Perfect. With 5.5 tons of fuel. I'm not complaining at that. And there's some clouds. And there we are as we climb into the Icelandic sky. So... That concludes part one of our flight from, uh, I forgot where we just departed, Kethelvik <laughs> to Glasgow. In part two will be, of course, a bit of the cruise, the descent preparation, 
the approach and the landing into what is a, a very blustery stroke stormy Glasgow. The surface wind the last time I checked was gusting to 50 with a base speed of 35. So we'll see how this handles that. Uh, but just a reminder, if you've made it to this uh, far in the video and you are sticking with it to the end, that flight sim, uh, the flight sim show is uh, on the 5th of October at RAF Cosford, uh, just uh, sort of southeast-ish of Telford by a few miles. Uh, or if you are from the Midlands or know where Birmingham is, it's about five or so miles to the, uh, the west of Birmingham. From me and this incredibly noisy 757 until part two take care thanks for watching and hurrah but now